Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Warzone and Black Ops Cold War in depth. Today's a little bit of a double dipping episode because we're going over the basic stats of the Carve 2 in both games. The new Carve 2 tactical rifle was just added to Black Ops Cold War and Warzone today. It came out a few hours ago. I've been playing with it, testing it, and trying to learn everything that I possibly can. It's identical to the G11 from Black Ops 1, which in real life was part of the NATO ACR program to build new and experimental battle rifles, a lot of burst weapons. It was a weird experimental weapon that never saw why widespread adoption, but it's neat enough to be included in a video game. You can unlock it in a bundle by spending money, and the bundle you get is pretty nice. You get kind of like an NES like blaster cartridge skin, so you have like a cartridge magazine and it looks like that old NES blaster, which is very 80s themed and cool, or you can get it for free with in-game challenges. If you're going to go the money spending route, I would recommend that you use code DRIFTOR, which is all caps and O is a zero, thus making this video sponsored, but realistically this isn't the best gun. Even if the skin is cool, it's probably going to be better to do the in-game challenge and probably easiest to do that in zombies because all you need is long shots. In my opinion, it's a weird gun in both games, both in Warzone and in Cold War, and it's probably not going to be top tier in either game, but it's also not bad in either game. It's kind of just in an unusual spot. And we're going to start off with Black Ops Cold War stats today and then move on to Warzone. In Black Ops Cold War, it'll deal 54 damage to the head up close and 39 to the body up close. I have not yet tested long ranges, so we're kind of max minning the gun and focusing on max right now. And that damage is a little bit low for tactical rifles in this game, which means it cannot get a one burst kill with body shots. In order to get a one burst kill in Black Ops Cold War, you have to headshot people. Now, thankfully, the rate of fire is incredibly fast at 1200 rounds per minute, and it has a burst delay of 250 milliseconds. This is a three round burst weapon, not a four round burst weapon no matter what reddit has to say about it and of note this is an auto queuing burst so you can pull the trigger and then automatically pull and hold it and it'll sort of requeue the burst as soon as it's available Treyarch style which I think is the easier way to do this weapon and it's very easy for me to test that so after all of this the theoretical time to kill for body shots in Black Ops Cold War is about 400 milliseconds which is just very slow it's kind of probably in the bottom third or maybe even like bottom 10% of time to kill in this game not very impressive it's not going to drop people it's not going to shred now if you're getting headshots that can be way faster but of course headshots with a burst weapon on a moving target are far less reliable than just spamming for body shots Bullet velocity is 600 meters per second, which is kind of slow for a tactical rifle. Most of the other tactical rifles, I think the next slowest one is the Type 63 at 625 meters per second, and a lot of them around 700 LMGs are faster than this. This is more like the bullet velocity for an assault rifle, which is workable, but it's not particularly amazing. Handling stats are pretty much in line with the other tactical rifles in this game. It'll aim down sights in 350 milliseconds. Sprint out time is a little bit faster than that at 250 milliseconds, so you can spam hip fire a little bit faster than you can ADS if you end up being desperate. One thing that I did notice almost immediately, and I don't know if it's because I've been playing too much Warzone and kidding my classes differently or what, but the side-to-side -side strafe speed is extremely slow and probably the biggest drawback to using this weapon. When I was playing, I noticed that even without attachments that slow down my strafing and shooting move speed and stuff, that when I would aim down sights, I was basically stuck in place, and that was a very difficult thing to deal with on occasion. It made me feel very vulnerable, and especially in a bouncy game like Cold War, enemies were able to reposition all around me and just kind of shred me. I'm hoping that as I unlock more attachments that it'll be easier to manage. The accuracy over range is good and that's an opinion. I haven't even unlocked enough grips to do a full testing and see what our min max is on that. But even without the grips, both the basic weapon and the blueprint were very easy to control at long range. I could reasonably get headshots and doink people and it was, it was workable. In my opinion, it's also a two hit or quit weapon. It seems to be pretty much designed for you to spam burst people down. Since you can't one burst, you have to two burst and it's very accurate. So it feels like the idea is that you should two burst people pretty quickly and put them to bed. So looking at this compared to other uh, tactical rifles and other weapons in the game, it can't one burst like the other tactical rifles and it has a slower time to kill, but it's far easier to spam with. I think the M16 is pretty easy to spam with as is, but this one's even easier. If you don't mind a little bit slower time to kill and you want more accuracy in your weapons or more suppressing fire because your shots and follow-up shots will be really fast, then this might be the gun for you. It doesn't feel bad, it just doesn't 
really shred people with that fast time to kill kind of like we'd like. So moving on, let's talk about the Warzone stats of this weapon because they're a little bit more complicated in Warzone. The Warzone Carve 2 damage has four different body areas. If you're hitting headshots, that'll be 61 damage, which is roughly a 1.8x multiplier over the guts, which is typically 1.0. So the pretty high headshot damage, which is good. Chest damage is 38. That's also good. Guts is 36 is pretty standard and limbs 34 is pretty standard. This is the kind of damage profile that you already see on a lot of tactical rifles and some of the heavier assault rifles. So as far as damage is concerned, it's very normal for its weapon class. There's nothing really exceptional about it here. But similarly to Black Ops Cold War, it still fires really fast in Warzone at 1200 rounds per minute. And I do want to say that in Warzone, oddly, it was causing issues with frame rounding on my computer. So sometimes it was splitting frames and that number was a little bit hard to calculate. I'm going to put a little bit more work into this over the next couple of days and try and get a more accurate answer. I think I'm going to do some 120 FPS recording. But as of today, uh, I'm going to say 120 rounds per minute. It might be just a little bit slower than that. Burst delay is 200 milliseconds, which is really slow for tactical rifles. A lot of those have been getting nerfed to increase that burst delay so that your follow-up shots are slower. This one, uh, like Black Ops Cold War, is a little bit more spammy. It's a three-round burst. And one important thing to note is that unlike Black Ops Cold War, this one doesn't auto-cue your burst. So if you do the trick where you shoot once and then pull the trigger again super fast and hold it down, it's going to do nothing. You can't pull the trigger again until it's ready to do its full burst after that 200 milliseconds delay. So in Warzone, it's very important that you time the trigger pulls on your shots. It can make it go from a very slow to a relatively fast firing weapon if you do that. So take some time to experiment with it. If you put those damage numbers together with some uh, rate of fire numbers, what you'll see, and I am including the burst delay in this one, that if you're landing headshots or almost all headshots, it'll kill in 400 milliseconds, which is very fast. It's not the fastest thing in the game for headshots, but it's still pretty shreddy. However, if you're just hitting body shots, it has about a 700 millisecond time to kill, which is going to be on the lower end of things. And this is because it can't one burst and the burst uh, damage of any particular burst isn't high. So there's a lot of milliseconds that have to be added with that 200 millisecond burst delay to kind of boost it out. So that's very, very rough sometimes. So the time to kill on this weapon is going to be slower than a lot of the popular weapons, and that's immediately going to lower the time to kill. I mean, um, turn a lot of you guys off and make you not want to use it. I haven't fully experimented with it in Warzone yet, but it's not looking stronger than the current popular weapons. ADS time is 333 milliseconds, which is uh, basically the same as Cold War, so we're keeping it very similar to that. Tax sprint out time is 350 milliseconds, with regular sprint out being 250 milliseconds, pretty similar to the other tack rifles in the game, and just general uh, performance to assault rifles. There's nothing really abnormal about that. It's not a really snappy SMG is all you need to know. Reload time's a little bit fast, 1.85 seconds with the base version that doesn't have any attachments on it. Not so bad. With attachments, it can reload much faster, and you can end up with like a 70-something round magazine which is kind of awesome and this is an opinion but my opinion is that accuracy on the new carve 2 isn't good enough with the basic attachments to be viable so as it is i haven't leveled it up i haven't been able to test all the grips and go for a true like minimum accuracy build and kind of see what's going on but the nes version and the basic version that i played with just aren't very accurate. You don't land a lot of your shots. It doesn't have the best bullet velocity, it seems, and it kind of struggles at long ranges, so it doesn't have that same long range viability of the M16. This is subjective again, uh, but the Carve 2 seems to both struggle at long ranges and it gets outgunned by full autos in close quarters combat. Really, the place that this gun shines is medium range combat. It's a very spammy, oppressive, kind of annoying weapon in medium range combat that you won't be missing many shots with, but it's outgunned pretty severely at long and close quarters, so it's kind of in a weird spot. And this is another subjective opinion. I don't think that the Carve 2 is going to be meta in Warzone unless it has some really good attachments, and that's kind of the same story for Black Ops Cold War. It's going to be very usable in both modes, okay? It's going to be it's going to be all right in both modes. It's not going to be bad. You don't have to feel bad for using it. If you enjoy it, if you like the skin, if you like the idea of the gun, that's totally cool. It's just not going to be the most optimal, tactical, efficient loadout, so I think most people are going to gravitate toward things that are already popular and not really play with this a whole lot. But there is the possibility that since this is day one and I haven't had a chance to grind up and unlock every single attachment and test every attachment and every combination, that some other YouTuber out there or streamer or whatever is going to find that one unique setup that kind of turns it into a laser or something very scary or hard to deal with. And I kind of hope that happens. Any change to the meta is good in my opinion, but I'm not betting on it. Uh, it would have to have some exceptionally good attachments to truly become meta. 
Guys, that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful, and I hope you like this little uh, basic stats guide. This is something that I haven't done in a long time. Typically, I wait for the full stats to come out, but everybody's been kind of beating me to the punch. So I decided today to put in the work early to try to get the best stats out as fast as I could. Hope you guys appreciated the effort. Thank you for those of you that showed up on stream while I was testing and kind of suffering and plunder in some of the more goofy modes trying to extract numbers for all this because it's never a fun job. So thank all of you for your support and let me know what you think about this kind of content because if you like it, I'll make more of it. Drifter out.